The moment everything sinks in is when I'm sitting on the front straight before the race. But once that green flag drops, all the motion should go out the window and it's eyes forward the whole time. The first time I came into the studio to film ECOT TV, I had worn a jacket that was green and they have a green screen, so that was an issue. So I had to take the jacket off and I was very nervous and I was very flustered. I was extremely worried that I was going to mess everything up. The second I walk out on stage, I see thousands of faces and phones in the air. And at first it's a little, it's a little setback because you're like, oh my gosh. But you know, then after those five seconds go by that feel like an hour, you're totally fine again and you just feed off the energy and just play catch with some vibes. It's the best. My name is Hamilton Ingerson. I'm 16 years old, a graduating senior, and I am an anchor for ECOT TV. I'm Mick Klaus, and I'm in a band some of you may have heard of called New Hollow. I'm Jason Wolf, and I'm a USF 2000 race car driver, and I drive for Paps Racing Services. Okay, when I'm in the car, me and the car are almost like one. Whatever it does, I have to react to, and I can only go as fast as the car will let me go, pushing it to its limits through every corner. When the cars are on track, you can't hear anything but that. You try to talk to your engineer and that's all you can hear is the loud roar of the race cars. Putting myself out in front of people and having to speak to audiences that are big or in this case when I'm doing ECOT TV in front of a camera and so I have to imagine there being people there. Um, it's nerve wracking at first, definitely. Well, when we're out, I mean, it's anything from radio interviews to TV stations, to performances, and a lot of times in the same day. So, you know, we'll get up at four, go do a TV station, then go set up at our concert, wherever we're gonna be playing, and then probably do like a radio thing. And then after the show, do a meet and greet, and, and then uh, go home, or go to the next show, probably get home around one or two, and then wake up at four again, and do it all over. I feel like the drive to push myself and the drive to do what I want to and the drive to be the best at what I want to do is definitely helped, especially ECOT TV. I've learned how to talk to people. I've learned how to be comfortable in front of a camera and speaking to people. So I drive in an IndyCar sanctioned series, which is a ladder program by Mazda. I'm in the USF 2000 series, which is the first rung of the ladder. After that, there goes Pro Mazda and then Indy Lights. After Indy Lights, you get a ride in the IndyCar series if you win the championship. Traveling is a big thing in racing. You go all over the world, and in this series, we mainly stay in America, but make a few trips to Canada. We go, f I go from Ohio to California, from Ohio to Texas, and Ohio to Florida, multiple times throughout the year. When I was younger, I just did it because I loved it, and I didn't really know anything else. And then when I got older, everyone kind of always talked about what they were gonna do, or when I grow up, and I just figured, you know, why, why not start now? The series is so competitive because people come from all over the world seeking that one prize from Modest Motorsports, which is the ride in the next series in the ladder, which puts a lot of pressure on everyone because that's a $400,000 prize. The commitment it takes to do this is enormous. You have to make it your top priority above everything, above, uh, well, not school, of course but it's number two. You've got above your friends, above girls, above whatever, you know? When I started at ECOT, I came right out of a school that only went up to fifth grade, and um, I skipped the sixth grade. And at that point, I sort of realized, being a fifth grader who went straight to seventh grade, that I was, I was good at that school thing. I knew what I was doing. I, I could do just as well as everybody else, no matter, even if I was younger. You know, in times we have to do stuff and we're obligated to do something, you know, like band-wise, and the teachers are understanding, and we were able to complete the work after when we had time, and it's just, it never felt like we were against, you know, authority. Econ makes things a lot easier when I'm at the track, because a lot of times I'm stuck at the track doing my homework but it makes it easier that I can do it at night after the race day is over and I'm all relaxed in my own motor.
I just want to be doing this forever, and I know it's the same for Evan and Chad. It's music's our favorite thing in the world, and we just want to do this for as long as we possibly can. When I first started in go-karts, I always knew I wanted to take it more than just the regional stuff, but I never knew how far. So once we got into the big cars, I knew this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I don't know what I'm going to do after graduation, but despite that, I have time to pursue interests and options. And what I do know is that whatever I end up doing, I'm going to push myself always to be the best that I know I can be. Without ECOT, I probably wouldn't be able to follow my dreams of becoming one of the best race car drivers in the world. I feel like ECOT has enabled me to drive myself and become self-disciplined and make myself my own competition to do better than I did yesterday. It just felt like we were working together and it was the best feeling in the world that we owe ECOT this entirely because there was no way this was possible without them.